but that's just the way it is. And that's kind of the nature of this, this message, right? I got a message, so I'm passing it on. So first of all, the anyone can farm tribe, the name there stems from a time when we were told, you can't farm, leave it to the experts, right? And so we kind of mocked those that were saying that and said, no, anybody can farm. <laughs> you're not gonna, you're not gonna limit that to just some people or the the elect. Anybody can farm, right? So it's it's a little in your face, uh, but it's supposed to be that way. So I'm I'm doing something now, and it's clear to me what to do. But sometimes that clarity is, is, is like a feeling. I, I can't really put it into words. So uh, I'm working on something right now. And I'm always working on something. And, and what I'm working on right now is, to me, it's a really important thing. I'll show you. I got these phone poles here off a tri another tribe member, actually. And uh, then I got the, the wood for this beam right here that I built off another tribe member. It's a pretty cool beam. Two by 12, three of them, sandwiched with a little uh, construction adhesive and some, some bolts, a whole bunch of screws, and even some nice long nails. Um, and my plan is to lift that up on top of these phone poles, and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do that, but I, I have a plan right now, and it took me a couple minutes to figure it out, but I'm, I'm going to get it done today. But anyway, the, the message that I want to put across is um, lately, you know, we've been bombarded. Like, I don't think you can not, I mean, if you're hearing me, I don't think you can not hear the bombardment of, uh, of negative information, just terrible. I mean, death, destruction, sorrow, murder, you know, it's all there. And if you really want to get into it, you can really, <laughs> really get your fill. And it, but what that does, I think, if we back up from that and look at the big picture, right? And everybody on here, you're homesteaders, right? So you've, you've already made a decision to live a certain way. And uh, you don't probably live in, in major population centers. And you're probably somewhat pulled away from the system. You know, you, you've said, hey, no, I'm going to, I'll raise my own food. Thank you very much. Um, I'll uh, take care of my own recreation. Thanks very much. But uh, I don't want to do what you guys do. And, you know, I'm going to live my way. No, no offense if you want to live your way. Go for it. But uh, uh, we're going to do this the way we want to. Just And nobody cares, right? You just back away. You do your thing. And it's all good. It should be. Can be. Very productive. Uh, but this negative horror that keeps finding its way into our, our uh, psyche is really destructive. And so I, I've said to myself, well, I'm just going to throw my phone away. Well, that doesn't really do it because then I'm always like, gee, I wonder what's going on. I wonder what's, you know, you just want to know, like, what do I need to do? And, um, and so you wind up, oh, I got to get a newspaper. I got to switch on the news. I got to talk to somebody that's always listening to what's going on. <clears throat> and then you wind up right back where you started from. So it's, it's kind of a loop and it's not a good loop. So I was listening to uh, a lady that I listened to about health things, right? And she's an Australian lady by the name of Bar Barbara O'Neill. You may have seen her and I really like her. She reminds me of my wife in a lot of ways. And uh, she was talking yesterday about pathways, pathways in your psyche. And, um, you know, when you uh, wake up in the morning and the first thing you see is dead people, 
you know, at the hands of another group of people, what does that do? It creates a pathway and you think first apprehension and then horror and then revenge and all those other things where really where I am right now, I can't exercise any of those things except right here. I can't get in revenge at all. Oh, I hate those guys. Oh, good. You hate them. Big deal. What's it going to do? Nothing. And I, I, I don't even want to get into like who's right and who's wrong. Good guys, bad guys. I don't even want to do that because it doesn't matter here. You know, I guess I can do a Facebook thing and say, I stand with the, uh, the Martians. Doesn't do any good. And it doesn't help us because our overall mission is to create a homestead where we can live and be productive, raise our children, feed ourselves, you know, all those things. That, that's all you really want anyway out of life. I don't care if you live in Washington, D.C. You want those things out of life. But if you live in Washington, D.C., let's say, and I don't want to pick on those guys. I got friends there. You sort of have to, well, uh, to live there, you got to be in the system. Your kids got to go to their schools. Those, those schools, I shouldn't say there, because that's a good guys, bad guys thing. So I think the way around this is when you're on the homestead and the negative creeps in, like you... Uh, you look at your phone for some information, and then all of a sudden you see something horrible. Minimize it in your head. Just like, well, okay, it's terrible, but I can't, I can't do anything about it. And okay, maybe pray, right? Ask uh, God to intervene. And it, 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 if if the whole thing's a psyop and it didn't really happen, then he'll be like, yeah, cool. I, I'm glad that you want me to intervene, but there's no, nothing necessary here. And then it's off your back. But if you carry it around all the time, not only will you wind up in a depressed mental state, you won't get your phone poles in. You won't get your beams built. You won't take care of your garden. You won't do all those things that you need to do. You're creating a pathway in your brain of despair. And you don't want to do it. You, you have to consciously say, nope, not doing that. So um, that's what I've been doing, and I've been struggling, actually, because I feel for people that are getting hurt in war. War is a horrid, terrible thing, and I, you feel like shaking somebody and saying, stop this. Stop doing this. But that's out of beyond my ability to do anything about so. So, but what, what can I do? What can we do as homesteaders? Put your phone poles in, build your beams, build your rail to go underneath there, get your knives lined out, get your, uh, your, your bone saws ready, you know? Uh, because what we're about here is being the leaders in, in a food system and a, a life system. Right, And so if we allow ourselves to get tangled up in somebody else's problems, honestly, it is somebody else's problems, you're not getting this done. And if you don't get this done, you can't help the people around you. You've got to get this done. So the pathways of productivity have to be enhanced. Here's what I do. And I don't, I didn't start out doing this like, oh, I got to take care of my mental health. I didn't do that. It's just that I like doing this, right? And a lot of times I'll say, well, I need a rail at 14 feet so I can butcher cattle. I need that. Well, that's, that's not easy to do, especially I got to do it all myself. And um, I don't have you know, uh, an expense account where I can hire in professionals to do it, right? I have to be the professional. And so it requires, okay, well, how am I going to do it? So there's a bunch of questions, a bunch of problems along the way that I have to present to myself and then say, okay, figure it out. And I, a lot of times before I go to sleep at night, instead of 
thinking about rotten stuff that happened when I was in high school, which creeps in, I think about how am I going to fix this problem? How am I going to fix this? How am I going to get that, that beam up on top of those posts? That's a good one. How are you going to do that? Oh, just rent a crane. Why don't I have a sky crane come in and the U.S. Air Force can lift it up in place? That's not going to happen. You know, it's, it's me that's got to do it, and i got to figure out a way to do it. And I'm sure people that watch this will say, oh, well, all you got to do is this. But, you know, for me, it took a lot of thinking to do. So, But anyway, that thought, before I go to sleep, is opening up pathways of solutions, of productivity, of, you know, positive um, things. And, and when you approach other people, it's in, on a positive note, not on a, you know, a negative note. I don't want that, you know. We, we can talk about those things. I know people that have, have family that are in those areas on both sides that are getting torn up. And they want to talk about it. Okay, let's talk about it. But it can't be something that's going to hold the homestead back. The homestead has to progress and so therefore you have to tame or master your your thought process into okay I've thought about that for enough now I'm going to think about this and then open up those pathways of productivity I should I should uh trademark that I didn't get that from uh from Barbara O'Neill I kind of made that up myself but Okay, so what's another thing you can do? You can surround yourself with people that think like that, right? And if they don't think like that, I don't know, don't be around them. Um, So I want to start talking about, this is specifically for the, uh, the tribe people, is skilling yourselves up, getting skilled, learning how to do stuff. So Homestead Hog Harvest is coming fast. It's going to be the beginning of... November. It's the first Friday, Saturday, Sunday of November. We start with live hogs, and when we're finished, two, we start with two. And when we're finished on, on Sunday, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're uh, well on the way to finishing up our bacons, sausages, um, you know, pork chops, and all those things that you think about when you think about butchering a hog, but this is hands-on from live hogs to products that you can save and feed to your family. Very, very important skill to have. Very, I mean, it's almost like paramount because if you can't get them from on the hoof to the plate, then this, that's a major sticking point. And it's one that you can overcome. Many have. I mean, we've been doing this class now. I think this is our 12th or 13th year. And um, just last weekend, somebody texted me and said, oh, we're butchering pigs this weekend. Thanks a lot. You know, and, and that made me feel like, hey, well, this makes sense. Because there's, there's a, a tent maker over in that area that can can make it happen. They might be the coolest guy in their neighborhood because they can butcher an animal and get it from on the hoof to on the plate. It's a, it's a huge thing to know how to do. And are you going to get it five stars right off? No. You might be half a star, but still you'll be able to eat. It doesn't have to look perfect. That perfection thing is, I don't know where that comes from in American society. Well, I, I guess I do. And it's okay. But it doesn't, you don't have to be perfect. You're going to get better every time. But the anyone can farm homestead hog harvest is a good place to start. Because you're going to be around people that are overcomers and can-do people. That was a pig touching an electric fence. That's the sweetest sound I ever heard. There's a person right there on my thing. I normally don't look at him, but some names you just see. And those that's an individual that... Uh, was in a, a situation where they had pigs and they couldn't get them in to be processed because of, you know, environmental things that you can think about and get you all bent out of shape too, where instead they were able to just circumvent it, 
take a class, the next weekend they went home and butchered their own pigs. Are they, were they perfect? No. But it doesn't matter at this point because that was three years ago, and those pigs are long gone onto the compost pile via being processed through the human body, right? So do they have to be perfect? No, absolutely not. Once your belly's full, do you think, that pork chop was a little thin on one end. I don't know if I like that. No, it doesn't matter. So that class is coming up. There are some slots, and I would really like to fill it. Um, it's the first, like I said, the first weekend in the month of November. We're going to be using all this new equipment. We've got a new place to do it in. It's going to be really nice. So if you are not signed up for it and you'd like to, you can uh, either call the farm or you can go to bakersgreenacres.com and start the process there. All right, but there's all kinds of ways to come to the class. All right, remember, anyone can farm.